It's great to be with you again today as we continue our side-by-side journey through Romans. Now we're thinking about Romans 5 today, and this is an amazing passage. I remember reading about a man in, in North Korea who was assigned to have to clean the toilets out. Now they were pretty rough, I think. Nobody else would go near him. And he had kind of this place of isolation. But it turned out that he kept finding these pieces of paper. These pieces of paper with some writing on it. And when he did a little bit more looking into it, 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 he discovered that this was really a Bible. And uh, they were using the Bible for toilet paper and they'd torn it in pieces. And he was able to get these pieces of the Bible and read them. And when I remember reading that, I thought, wow. The, the, the unique ways in which God is at work in, in reaching out to people. But that aside, I just thought, what if you find a small piece of the Bible torn off containing Romans 5, verses 6 to 11? I think that it would be totally adequate that if that's all you ever discovered, that it would keep you, sustain you, and help you uh, for a very, very long time. So let me read this to you. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have been justified by his blood, how much more? Sorry, how much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? For if while we were, we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. I think that there's so much in that particular section these few verses are, are so dense of truth and they speak about it a rescue plan. It's not that long ago, in fact only about the 10th of January it was in 2021. It was in the Hushan gold mine in Shandong province in China. An explosion happened in a gold mine and 22 miners were trapped. Nobody really knows what the cause was but a number was number of them were killed. And eventually, 11 of them were brought out to safety. But if you think about the process that was involved in rescuing these men, some of them were, some of them were 520 metres below sea level, and some were even further, 629 metres below sea level. I mean, think about that. You know, that's incredible. About 1,800 feet down in the earth. And they had to drill down a communication shaft, air shaft, so that they could get contact with these men. And the process that was involved, the thought, the planning, in order to rescue these people. It's true that in so many rescue situations, a great deal of cost, sacrifice and investment is involved to bring people to the place of safety. And, you know, that's exactly what you see in this passage, isn't it? It talks about Christ dying for the ungodly. It talks about God showing his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It talks all about the purpose, the process by which God has brought about that great rescue for you and I. Now I know you don't maybe feel at times like a man trapped sort of 1,500 feet under the surface of, of the earth. Maybe you don't feel lost, but of course... That's just the lulling of sin. But when that happens in our lives and, and we are aware of our lostness, then we begin to appreciate just what these verses mean. They are precious to all of us who know the Lord and have been rescued by him. And if we, if we don't know the Lord, these verses begin to describe our lives. Ungodly, sinners, unjustified, therefore needing to be justified, Irreconciled, needing to be reconciled. Those are profound truths. But more than that, it also talks about how long will this last? I mean, may God has rescued us. 
And of course, those men who were rescued, and one of them actually, he described it like being born again all over again, which I think is a very helpful phrase for those thinking about their Christian lives. And that's a word the Bible uses, a phrase. But the question is, how long will this last? Well, listen to verse 10 and 11. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through, through whom we have now received reconciliation. In those two verses, there's something about a sense of conviction about this. God has done something for us in the death and the resurrection of his Son. And there's something really firm about this. Thinking about the vaccine, a lot of people are discussing how long will it last? You know, if I get the vaccination, will it last me for the whole year? Will I need it every year? Or will I be able to, you know, will there be a booster at some time? And of course, nobody can really give you an answer to that. We are now at the very early stages. And so no expert can really say how long it will last, how effective it will be, how confident can we be that we can enter into life in the normal way? Will it allow us to live a good and enriching life? Well, as we meditate upon the part that God plays, and that really is the key in this section in verses 6 to 11, it's all about what God has done. It's not about what we do, but everything is about what God has done. It talks about us being enemies. It talks about us, as I say, being sinners, about being ungodly and about needing reconciled. But it talks about God reconciling us his son dying, and about our Lord's life. And all of those things are God's work. And so what we can say, how long will it last? Well, on the basis that God is faithful as the Father, and the Son in his actions are so perfectly fitted to suit the needs of one who will bear our sins, because he's a perfect son who bears no sin himself, he can bear our sin, and because of the presence of God and the Holy Spirit in our hearts, convincing us, that's what it says. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. We know that God planned it and he initiated it. And he has sent his son to confirm it by the resurrection. And the Holy Spirit is applying it. We have this sense that we can be really sure. That's why later on you will read words like, Romans 8, 1, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. And he will go on to talk about there that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God's love is everlasting. So that he can say, in all thing, these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, angel or rulers, Things present or things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's such a sense of conviction and confidence about these words in Paul's message to the Romans. And they come to us today with the same sense of conviction that God has not changed. This is his everlasting, enduring truth that you and I can truly embrace. While we were weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, for you and for I. And those words, Christ died, are wonderful to remember. That was not just a did he or did he not, that's a reality. And your faith is in these realities. And it's not the strength of your faith, but it's the faithfulness of God that we are looking to. Even though our faith may feel very shaky sometimes, often does, it's a little faith in a very reliable truth and a very convincing, historically proven truth that Jesus has died and has been raised again so that you and I can be sure that we really are forgiven. So let's rejoice in that. Isn't that worth rejoicing in today? Well, how long will it last? Forever. And it's just at the right time. So may the Lord bless you as you ponder and meditate on these truths.